Hey friends, Patrick here and welcome to another C Sharp Beginners to Intermediate tutorial. Today we're going to talk about delegates and events. So you could also say a little bit of event driven development, right? Now, what are these things? And for that, I have this little example here. Let's say we're in a game and we have a player class, as you can see here. And in there, we have this little function here, add points. And when this function is called in this console application here, then, well, the player gets some points. We write a little comment about that. And as soon as the player reaches 100 points, we congratulate him on earning points, 100 points to be more specific. So this is just the player class. And in the program class then of our console application, we instantiate the player so we have a new instance of the player object and then we run the add points method three times so let's have a quick look how this will uh, result in the end in the console when it is here always on the other screen so you can see we see player and 30 points total points and so on and as soon as the player has 105 points so more than 100 then we say congratulations achievement unlocked for earning points now the thing is it's a great game right but what if we do not want the player class to decide if we want to show this message here congratulations achievement unlocked for earning points points what if we want to do that here in the program class of our little console application how can these both communicate how can the program react to the the events of the player well there's already the name an event also you could also say this is a notification can help to know when something specific happens. So for that, let's say this message here should be called or displayed from or in here in the program class, all right? So for that, we need an event. So let's just write an event or define an event here. So this would look like that. We have a public event of type action and just call this thing, for instance, achieve unlocked and this can be null so that the warning is gone great so with that now we have an event and instead of just writing this message into the console we just say achievement unlocked invoke now this means that other classes now it's not just a program class also other classes anything in our program in our application. For instance, if you are thinking of user interfaces, you're building a UI, could be a web application, could also be the uh, graphical user interface of a game. In there, then maybe the user clicks a button and something else in your app or in your game wants to react to that button click. So for that, you can also make use of events. You just raise that event, you use the invoke method down here and then someone else who wants to react to that event might know that this was raised. And how would this work? Well, these classes, whatever it is, have to subscribe to that event. So let's go now to the program CS class. And in here now, we just subscribe to the event of the player class. So we have our new instance and then we can say player, not layer, player. And then achievement unlocked, you see it here now, we've got this action event. And with plus and equal, we can now call a function, all right? This function is not there yet, so let's define that thing real quick. For instance, static void on achievement unlocked. And now in here, we just grab this line and paste it here. And here now we say, whenever the achievement unlocked event was raised or invoked, then we call our on achievement unlocked method. And here, let's just uh, say, congratulations from program CS achievement unlocked for earning points. And with that, now we see that let me run this again. On the other screen, we see now Congratulations from Program CS, achievement unlocked for earning points. All right, so this is great, right? So we have an event and we can also 
use other classes to subscribe to that event. And I will show you how in a minute, but we haven't talked about delegates yet. Now, the thing is we have this event achievement unlocked. This is nice. We know that something happens, but what if you want to know how many points the user actually got? So for instance, achievement unlocked for earning. Yeah. How many, how many points, right? So, for that, we can use delegates. And when you have a look in the documentation, it says something like delegates are something like pointers to a method. Well, let me just tell you that delegates are, they look like a signature of a function or of a method. They have return types and they also have arguments. All right. And you can make use of these delegates together with events. And with that, then you can again, do something anywhere in your application. You can subscribe to these events and then make use of the delegates to also have more information than just this achievement was, uh, this event was raised. All right. Now, how would that work? You know, explaining in just in words is sometimes a little bit hard. So let me just define a delegate here. We have the points. All right. And now we say public delegate void, I'm not returning anything here. Achievement unlocked handler, for instance. And here now we can say, uh, I have this argument here and that would be the points. And here now, instead of the action as a return type for the event, we now say achievement unlocked handler could also be null. And that's it. But now again, you see that we uh, can still raise the event, but we have an error now here and it says there is no argument given. Let me do that here. There's no argument given that corresponds to the required parameter points of player achievement unlocked handler invoke in. So this means now we have to give this thing our argument. And in our case, these are the points here. All right. And now what we can do is we say int points in our program CS, this line doesn't change at all. We just have the new argument here. And now we can say for earning points, points. All right. And I think I can remove this now. So now just a quick recap, save this. We have the delegates, a signature of a function if you want, and we make use of this delegate in the event here. And then whenever we want to invoke this event, we also give the uh, mentioned arguments, we provide them. And then anywhere in our application, we can subscribe to the event and have this information now available and we can do whatever we want with that information. So let's just run this again. We see it here, player earns so many points. And in the end, we say achievement unlocked for earning 105 points. Get the idea, this is great, right? So wherever we are in our application, we can react to events. There, it, it, there doesn't have to be some strict and tight coupling, right? We just subscribe to something wherever it is in our application, and then we can react to that. Now, one more thing, let's just say I want to create another class, for instance, a party class that wants to cheer the player on so that you can see that it's not only the player and the program class here. So we just add a new item, we call this now party. And in here now we create another function cheering, for instance, also with the points. And here now we say something like console right line. And again, using string interpolation, woohoo, you got freaking points, points, dudes. All right. And now I want to use this function here or call this function as well whenever the player reaches the 100 points. For that now, we also create an instance of our uh, new party class. So party, new, no, not the player now, actually the party, like that. And now, player achievement unlocked plus equals party, cheering, and that's it. All right, you see, doesn't have to be a function in our program class. In that case, we can also use a function of our party instance here. There it is. So let's just run this one more time on the other screen again. There we are. And you see now both functions or methods are called. We also see woohoo, you got freaking 105 points, dude. Isn't that nice? So this 
a little introduction into events and delegates. I hope you got the idea. One more important thing though, whenever you subscribe to events and you do not unsubscribe, could be the case that you get a problem with memory. So you introduce memory leaks. Now, in, for instance, a web application using Blazor, you have this iDisposable interface and in there, this means whenever a component, I know this is some other stuff now, but we also cover Blazor stuff on this channel, right? So whenever, for instance, you uh, destroy a component or you destroy an instance of something, then maybe you wanna also unsubscribe from a certain event because otherwise, you again might introduce memory leaks. Now, how would you do that? Well, you already saw uh, the uh, suggestion here from IntelliCode and that would just look like that, all right? So you subscribe to the event here, then you do something and whenever you don't need to react to that event again, most of the time maybe the case when you close something destroy something, whatever you like, then you just unsubscribe. The result is still the same. We have our console here. You see that the points are reached, 105 points. We see the result and in the background, we unsubscribe from the events. Okay, I hope you get the idea now and know a bit more about events and delegates. Please tell me in the comments. Again, this is a beginner somehow a beginner C sharp tutorial and planning on doing more of these. If you like them, you know the drill guys, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel. It does really does help to make these tutorials. And maybe if you want to support me even further, there's my Patreon page in the video description. Thank you so much to all my patrons. I love every single one of you. Thank you very much for watching and I see you next time. Take care.